Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are basically going to look at a really simple melody. Why I say it's a simple melody? Well, I think it's quite obvious. It just has three notes, which is E flat, F and G. I'm on the key of E flat major, so we're just going to use those three. Da na 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 na. Just E flat, F, G, G, F, E flat, E flat. And the point of this lesson is obviously not to teach you that melody, because I think even if you've played the piano for like one day, you could probably figure out that melody. So the point of this lesson is to actually figure out how to harmonize that melody using a variety of harmonic options, a lot of tricks of the trade if you will which i've learned along the way a lot of very classical approaches which people for years and years have been doing and a few modern approaches a few jazz a few gospel versions and a few thematic versions which you may find in movies and i have actually put this all together in a performance we've put out this video uh, also on our youtube channel which you could check out it'll also be presented at the end with all of this stuff in one uh, neat uh, rendition and if you'd like you can consider downloading MIDI files of this entire lecture which basically is me performing it in a variety of ways I'm playing the same thing with different rhythmic flavors different melodic articulations and so on and so forth so if you'd like the MIDI files are waiting for you on patreon and as always all the notes the notation related to the lesson before we get cracking it'll be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button hit the bell icon for notifications give the video a like leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn and consider following us on patreon where you'll get all this stuff and a lot of supplementary material for a lot of our youtube lessons so before we discover all the harmonic options let's first crack the melody line the melody is on the key of e flat major three flats right e flat a flat and b flat so the tune basically goes Just that. One, two, three, three, two, one, one, which is E flat, F, and G, the one, two, and three. You could also sing it with swaras if you know. Sa, re, ga, ga, re, sa, sa. E flat, E flat, F, G, G, F, E flat, E flat. Try to maintain it with a steady pulse that always helps in the initial stages. So. Again. So that's your melody. So the first thing you can do with this melody is try to embellish it with fifth chords. And that's my first style of harmony. So a fifth chord will just be root, fifth, octave. Now you could play this stuff anywhere. So if I actually stack a fifth with each melody note, it will already sound quite thick. To be flat. One more time. To you could even play the B flat and the E flat on the top end. Build some nice arpeggios around that. Whenever the melody is chilling out or resting, few articulations for the tune. You can do instead of going, you can do or just that. So the fifth itself adds a lot, and along with the fifths, you could color it up with other notes of the scale, like. Do the seventh, the sixth, back to the fifth, fourth. If you can, otherwise, that works. Or
very folk like So that's about fifth chord. So write down your root, your fifth, and then you can play the fifth and the root to just embellish any melody, and it kind of works. So the only challenge with the fifth and the melody is it doesn't serve a lot of chord possibilities or a lot of harmonic possibilities. So what you then need to do is expand. So the next thing I would like to do with the melody, especially on a piano, is you can use thirds to make the melody a lot more. a lot more thicker or a lot more richer so if you take the tune rather thin but with the thirds okay that's what we also call as a tenor part in a choir context so the upper third of e flat which is g is played in the bottom and you go ta ra 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 ta ra ra quite cool da 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 di 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 so that's e flat over g f with a flat g with b flat these are also open thirds i'm not doing now it kind of feels as though the melody has uh, been taken over by the thirds So instead of playing the third above the soprano or above the root, we play it lower, and we have the tune on top, which has just become a lot more thicker or a lot more richer. So. melody with fifths we've seen melody with thirds now the next thing which we start doing harmonically is look at our cadences there are four classical cadences which are generally taught with respect to analyzing classical songs modern day pop and rock or pretty much any song the classical cadences are the authentic cadence which is the five going to one in this case b flat or b flat dominant seventh going to e flat so that's the authentic or the perfect cadence then you have the half cadence which is essentially any chord landing or ending at the 5 so that would go so that's your 2 2 is f minor because f is the 2 of e flat so so that's 2 going to 5 or you could do 4 going to 5 2 That's four, five, one. Four, five, one. Okay. So that's your half cadences: two going to five, four going to five. You also have what we call as the deceptive cadence, which is five. Five going to six. Six is also the relative minor chord. So. Five going to six. You see, all these options are there. That's authentic. Half cadence. Two, two going to five. That's two. That's two going to five. Or. That's four going to five, or you do the deceptive cadence, which is, and you can add the deceptive with a secondary dominant. More on that later in the video. So don't for, don't miss the entire chapter. You need to watch this whole video. You're going to learn a lot of chord possibilities, probably all of all of which at least I know. So you need to watch the video till the. <clears throat> so you need to watch the video till the very end, guys. There are a lot more chord possibilities coming your way. I've tried to exhaust my options at least with regards to this melody. There's one more classical cadence, a popular cadence called the plagal cadence, which goes four going to one. 
which is the that's your a common church gospel amen cadence tum pum pa for going to one but you could do a modification to the plagal by going to do 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 a minor four to going to the one you could do that so let's see how that sounds to do 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 plagal Minor, minor, back to tonic. The normal plagal is used a lot. The minor is a bit rare, but you're finding it used a lot more in modern music these days. Especially artists like Billie Eilish do that very often. Okay, so how do you actually play this on the piano? The basic way to do this is melody in the right hand, chords in the left hand. So try to get your cadences. before you get the entire chord you can play single notes which are the roots of the chords right root back to tonic then you can build towards the actual chord e flat again perfect there another thing you could also do is if you are a bit more advanced on the instrument you can play the entire chord in your right hand itself as an inversion see i'm playing b flat and E flat, but I'm making sure to squeeze or keep the melody at the top end. So this requires more than hand independence; it requires finger independence, which I would not advise you to do if you're just about starting off with the keyboard. So you should go if you're if you know this technique. You play. See, no left hand, only right hand. With the bass. you can just cling on to the chord roots and that allows you to play deeper as well so three ways of playing the the chord progression or the cadences first play single roots if you are very new get the roots of the cadence plagal um half or or deceptive and then with the chords you could play the chords exclusively in the left or you could do it in the right hand by inverting the chord so that the melody line is up top so that's how i'm going to demonstrate pretty much even the latter part of the, the cadences and other harmonic options you either play the melody with chords there or you do melody and the chords here in the in the bass right guys so those were the cadences again authentic or perfect then we have half cadence then we have the deceptive cadence and the plagal cadence which all have their own variations moving forward so another nice strategy with the same melody is to play it with what i call as the line cliche bass or a scenario where your bass just drops chromatically down and it could also climb chromatically up or diatonically up if you want to do it in either way and i'll just give you an idea and then show you what exactly is going on i'm just going to take the journey from e flat to a flat okay d d flat c b b b flat a a flat now yes i these are actual chords e flat g minor with a d you know and then a flat over c these are all these are all actual triads or actual chords but instead of actually thinking it that way you could go 
just drop your bass now you could drop your bass with octaves down below or you could even do it with keeping the pinky on the root and just dropping chromatically and you don't have to go fully chromatic right you can go well you can skip more here and there like see here i didn't play the d but i could also go fully chromatic and see how i'm supporting my melody here with the fifth embellishment with the fifth okay that's your line cliche drop and then you can climb up for example check that out c d e flat f e flat over g a flat f over a end on b flat so what did i do there that's my climbing chords as i'm calling it c e flat so c minor to e flat instead of going directly i go with a passing d and i climb further c d e flat f g which is actually e flat over g a flat a b flat you can continue and you can loop it ba g e flat very nice chromatic loop isn't it it just goes all over the place pretty much the logic behind these uh, connecting notes guys is the fact that they are all dominant chords so c minor that's b flat over d but that resolves very well to e flat because b flat is a fifth of e flat We've done a lot of videos on this you should check out our lessons on the secondary dominant chord a lot of these lessons will really help you with uh, understanding how chords connect to the other okay moving on so that was about line clichés and climbing chords right a couple more things before we sign off with the lesson we have the idea of secondary dominant chords which i was hinting at earlier secondary dominant chords could give you things like this you know you could play a chord from out of the scale a dominant chord coming back to a chord from within a scale which is pretty much what a secondary does so we've put a chart together with all the secondary chords of e flat major you should check it out in the notes uh, which you can download so so let's let's break this down so let's say i wanted to go from E flat to F minor. So, what's the five of F minor? C going to F. So, it works quite well. C takes you to the F minor, or you let's say you wanted to go to. you want to go to the g minor from e flat to g minor what is the fifth of g that is d7 or d right it you may have to change the melody ever so slightly in order to accommodate an f sharp there now let's say i wanted to go to a flat which is the four major i can do that via the one dominant itself so i took e flat major e 
flat dominant going to a flat now let's say i wanted to go to the b flat what is the five of b flat f you need to know your intervals that's the five all works in most cases you don't even have to change your tune the tune can be the same what the, the final hurdle now is to go to the 6 minor which is the next chord of the scale yeah so you have the opportunity of going from anywhere from the tonic chord e flat major to any other diatonic chord diatonic means from the scale chord so that is secondary dominance i've explained this chapter really well using a bunch of videos on youtube more specifically uh, i've talked about do a dear the sound of music classic and um, uh, just the general theory has been explained all through the uh, youtube channel so do go through that moving forward guys so the most popular chord progression of all time arguably is the 251 cadence or the 251 movement so if you can find what the 251s are of your major key and the relative minor key and then superimpose it with the melody of course it's going to sound really really awesome so look at e flat what is the 2 f minor B flat becomes the dominant five, which you can color by playing as a seventh or with this sort of jazz extension, which is A flat over B flat. This gives you a very nine or eleven feel. So F minor, a B flat eleven or B flat. You can just call it B flat major, and that resolves to. E flat so F B flat E flat F minor B flat dominant E flat major so ti ri 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 tu ro ro you have to change it a bit fast because it's a quicker cadence tu ro 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 at least that's how i'm playing it you could also go tu ro 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 you could go evenly F minor, B flat, or go quicker in a gospel. And I do a. I like that at the end because I have a gap. There we go. And now coming to the two five one minor. So how the two five one minor works, guys, would be. You want to go to the relative minor of E flat, which is C minor. So to go there, what is C minor's two five one? You have to ask yourself the question, which will be that will be D diminished, going to G seventh, landing on to. C minor. So C minor is the relative key of E flat major. You need to know that. You can do. So E flat diminished dominant minor. So for a minor two five one. that's the deal and you can always check out after you watch this lesson i've done a detailed series on minor chord progressions where i this is mentioned almost all the time so major 251 minor 251 pretty much both work for us so two other very interesting approaches which i have for you they use borrowed chords and i've named them with rather unofficial names because it's not there in the textbooks the brave cadence which is the Three flat going to four, four major. I'll explain this later, and the other one will be the epic cadence, which I call. That's a six flat, seven flat, going to the major. Now, how it works here with the epic and the brave, they both use borrowed chords. You could argue from the parallel minor key, so that would be. E flat natural minor, which has a flat three, 
a flat 6 and a flat 7 the flat 3 the flat 6 and the flat 7 always will form major chords so that's f sharp major b major d flat or c sharp major so demonstrating it with the melody we have that's your 6 flat b major which creates a very so Lydian sound because of the melody being F and then C sharp it's a very nice add sound so it's the epic one doesn't it feel epic so, can do a little lick there Into the brave option. Very sting. Sting uses this a lot. While I'm talking about this, I'm reminded of a video I've done on hybrid scales. Check that out. I've also talked a lot about this stuff as well. Borrowed chords and other movement. Just one or two more final variations of this entire melody. Remember, the melody is still... Nothing much changed. It's still that. The whole chapter, we've been doing that. I'd like to leave you with a very, a very modal cadence, something which reminds us of the Mixolydian scale or the Mixolydian mode. It, it would sound something like this. Very Beatles. That's a seven flat, four major, one. Very Mixolydian. So I call it the Mixo cadence, which is D flat your 7 flat A flat which is the 4 and E flat which is the 1 so there we go then we have the minor plagal which I may have touched on earlier that's your 4 minor you could play around with that 4 minor 1 major 4 major 1 major uh, 4 minor 1 minor of course in this melody it won't support since there is already a major third so I've put together all these variations in one performance which is going to follow the lesson so instead of me revising everything which I normally do I've actually performed it and I have clearly mentioned what is going on in each cadence in each chapter and uh, you need to watch that so before i sign off guys it'll be awesome Th first of all thanks for watching the video thanks for your continued support to our channel and uh, do give it a like do give it a comment do share the video with your friends bring more folks onto the channel it'll be awesome you can also consider our website where we have more structured courses or the youtube join button which also gives you more structured learning uh, patreon is always there to supplement the youtube lessons with my handwritten notes midi files and whatever is needed to supplement the lessons you just have to search for the the video on Patreon or the link will be in the description and a lot of additional learnings can be found in the description and on our website as well. All the videos have been laid out neatly. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next one. And here's the performance. Watch it and then go.